Hey YouTubers, this week we're going to explore the intergalactic one ring to rule them all, spotting whale sharks with the Hubble Space Telescope software, and the Nobel Prize winning snubbed discoverer of pulsars, Jocelyn Belvernell, will finally be recognised some 40 years after that disgraceful decision. Tell us about the neutrons in the Galaxy One ring. Yes, so this is a galaxy about 300 million light years away. Um, a beautiful uh, spiral object, here we see it in Look the right that. hand side. And that giant ring of stars with um, the, the purple blobs being seen by the mm. Chandra X-ray telescope, they reveal the most extreme objects in the known universe, feeding black holes and, and neutron stars. They're stealing material from a nearby companion. And they're basically formed in this ring um, because that little interloper on the bottom left has come flying towards the galaxy. Its gravity has stirred up essentially a tsunami of, of gas and material that has flung out from the middle of the uh, larger galaxy on the right and caused this beautiful ring of new stars to form as well as to reinvigorate these ancient engines of X-ray production. It's, wow. it's Ooh, a, I love that expression. It's engines a, of... Yeah, well, here and here is one of those examples. So this is um, a pulsar in the very centre, the very brightest point, that's feeding, has pulled in material um, into a disc around it from a nearby star. It's like a, um, a Ninjago Spinjitsu toy. Is oh, it? Yeah. Just sort of just <laughs> what that is. Uh, what, 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 just, what toy? <laughs> I'm in the zone at the moment. Um, it just, just sort of, you know, building up centrifugal force. You know, from, yeah. from that outside pulling action. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. right. And that's what forms a disc and eventually yeah. heats up in the middle to X-ray temperatures, millions of degrees. Now, what about these ancient cosmic rays? Oh, this is amazing. Get those ancient work. cosmic rays away from me. So this is a um, the Murchison Whitefield Array. It's the, one of the latest telescopes is sitting in WA. And it's looked at our two closest uh, large neighbours, the large and small Magellanic clouds. You can see them mm -hmm. on the night sky as little faint smudges. Well, in radio waves is revealed a collection of extreme events. So those um, feeding uh, black holes and, and pulsars would be very bright in this image. Yeah. Also newly forming stars and ancient cosmic rays from explosions of stars millions of years ago that are now spiralling in the magnetic field of those distant galaxies. An amazing bit of work led by uh, Dr. B. King Four at uh, the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research in WA. Absolutely beautiful. But within all those billions of stars and mini galaxies, there has to be some planet somewhere that's got something going on. Why can't we find it? Why don't they reach out and say, Oi, over here? Well, it will take or, them a very long or, time. Or, or do you think they have been, mm. but we just aren't of the intelligence to understand the signal? So partly that could be the answer. This is one of the radio telescopes that could do it. This is the Merch from Whitefield Array. It's a bunch of those little dipoles on the ground yep. looking up at the night sky. It's sensitive to radio frequency, so radio FMs, um, and that could be one way that aliens may choose to communicate. The problem is we've only been communicating for 100 years, essentially yeah. since radio was invented. 100 light years doesn't get you anywhere close no, to those distant right. galaxies. We have to wait millions of years and then millions of years for the return signal. So they're picking up FM radio signals, so all they're getting is the, the Bob and Bongo show yeah, from they're getting, various cities they're getting in Australia. Jacko and Wacko. What, what, what right. sort of and uh, and, message and would that send to <laughs> well, look, I mean... Stay well, away! <laughs> Triple J accepted, of <laughs> course. Yeah, absolutely. well, we've actually detected Triple J bouncing off the moon. So that was with that telescope. Yeah, it was really, I recall that. because the, yeah, yeah. well, the moon didn't want it. Like Triple J went, <laughs> right. no, thank you. It's just Sorry, such a powerful so signal. I love Triple J. I don't mean it. I love Triple J. But, but again, your assumption is predicated on the fact that they are sending the same kind of signals that we understand. Yeah. Mm. They absolutely. may not be. No, they no. Might, we're talking about FM. They might know. They might go, if what? We've been, we've been broadcasting to you for a thousand years now in blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah, look, we, we search with what we can, which is radio telescopes with optical light through perhaps laser-based communication, because that's what NASA is moving to. Mm. But it could just be with neutrinos or gravitons. We don't exactly. know, yeah. but exactly. we, we are searching this with what we can. Point. I love this. Our next story, uh, endangered animals being used yeah. with the help of astronomy. Do tell. So this is a, uh, a beautiful bit of work that's come from NASA with the Hubble Space Telescope software, which um, a, a particular bit of software was used to find stars and collections of stars and identify them in constellations. And that's exactly, to the software at least, what a whale shark looks like. Those bright white spots on the whale shark are as, I, uh, as unique as fingerprints are to us. So the NASA algorithm has run through 20 years worth 
of historical images to classify 43,000 separate examples and identify the 8,800 whale sharks in those photos. Otherwise, someone by eye would have had to go, that's pattern, that's Bob. And it was, and now thanks to this uh, <laughs> software, we've been able to track these beautiful creatures. That's fantastic. Uh, now, tell us a little bit about this wonderful woman we have to celebrate. I must admit, I've not heard of her, but then I'm an ignoramus in this field. James Jocelyn Burnell. Yeah, so obviously today there's been a bit of uh, double standards in sport for women. This was our uh, experience in science back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, Jocelyn uh, Bell Burnell, or Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell, discovered pulsars, one of those oh, right. X-ray emitting objects we yes. spoke about at the start. She is the woman who was actually responsible. There she is at the time, oh, fantastic. using um, a telescope out of the University of Cambridge. Her supervisors were awarded oh. the Nobel Prize. She was not, but fast forward to just this week and she has been awarded the very highest honor of the Breakthrough Foundation Prize, $3 million, and in typical fashion for her. She's doing, giving in all her scholarships for underrepresented uh, minority groups in STEM to get funded to go to science and uh, to school and to get their scholarships. Oh, we oh, love her. Love she's her. Amazing. And it's good that she's finally been recognised after yeah, she, a she, years ago. She's got a number of gongs, but I think uh, you can't go back and, uh, and award it, but it should yep. be done.